This video is part of the series on a first course in modelling, analysis and control. And here we look at problem solving with questions on first order responses. Problem solving then. The previous note gave a rapid overview of first order responses. Now we're looking at how we might solve problems. The most important thing is to carry a summary of core observations about the process. Then what you do is you identify which observation can be used in combination with the information in the question and use that to derive more information. <clears throat> this process is iterative so that once you've derived new information you then go back to step two. So here you're basically doing a loop. Having got new information you go back to two and say with this new information combined with what I already know can I work out something even further? Don't get sidetracked by what the question is asking. Now that might seem odd, but a temptation is to look at the, where the question is going eventually and think, I don't know what to do. And that's not the right way to do it. What you've got to do first is basically summarise what you know about the context and combine that with the information that you're given and seeing what information that gives you. Sometimes if you go through steps two and three several times and derive new pieces of information, suddenly how to answer the whole question will become self-evident. So what are the core observations that you should know? Always use time constant forms. If you're doing first order responses, always begin by putting the information into time constant form. And then ask yourself, does any information in the question help you to identify the time constant or the steady state gain? Note that the total movement is Cu minus x is zero. So does any information in the question link to this movement? Because if it does, you may be able to use this to work out a value for Cu or indeed something else. Note that the relative movement is linked to the dynamic term e to the minus time over time constant. So if you have moved x percent, so let's say you're x percent away from steady state, basically that means you've got a formula something like this and you can use that to work out time. Sometimes we just need to do what's really obvious and simple. Take the numbers and plug them into the formula to solve for x of t. So example one then. A first order system moves from an initial condition of w0 equals 3 to w2 equals 4.5, which is within 12% of its steady state. What is a suitable model? So how might we go about this? So use the observation that if you're x percent from the steady state, that tells you that you've got a formula x equals 100 times e to the minus time over time constant. Why is that useful? Because we've been given the time. Here it is. It's 2. We've been given x. Here it is. It's 12 percent. So we can use that formula to work out the time constant. So here we go. We write 12 equals 100 e to the minus time over time constant. We then take logs of both sides, which you can see is what I've done here, taken logs of both sides. OK. And then I plug in my numbers, I've got t equals 2, and that gives me the time constant. Right, next, the total movement is Cu minus x of 0. Now I can see what the total, sorry, what the movement is between the time 0 and the time 2. I've gone from 3 to 4.5. So 3 to 4.5 is 88% movement. I'm given that in the question. So the total movement is going to come from basically turning that one and a half to 100%. So I'm going to get that the steady state Cu is going to be 3, that's where I started, plus the total movement, which is 1.5 divided by 0.88, and that gives me that Cu equals 4.7045. And therefore, there's my final model in time constant form. You see I've plugged in the time constant there, and I've plugged in the Cu term there. Example 2. Find capital A given the model takes the form A dx dt plus bx equals u. And students get confused with this type of question because they say, oh, it's not in time constant form, so I don't know what to do. So, first thing to do. 63% of the movement 
corresponds to one time constant. So you can work out the time constant. If you follow this line down, you can see the time constant there, and it corresponds to t equals 5. So even though this model isn't in time constant form, I begin by looking at time constant information because that's what I know. So I work out the time constant is t equals 5. Next, I look at the steady state, and you can see the steady state down here is 2. And I know that the steady state is given by c times u, and it's 2. Now, I'm given in the question, you may have skipped, missed this over here in the top right, that u equals 4. So if u equals 4 and cu equals 2, then c must be 0 0.5. So I can now derive my model in time constant form. It's 5 dx dt plus x equals 0.5u. So all I need to do now is translate that back into the form that the question asked. So if I re rearrange that into the desired format, you see I get 5 over 0.5 dx dt plus 1 over 0.5x equals u, and so therefore capital A equals 10. Example 3. A resistor capacitor circuit should settle to within 5% in 6 milliseconds and store at least 5 coulombs at steady state with an applied voltage of 250 volts. Find some suitable model parameters. So first, write down what I know, which is the model of a resistor capacitor circuit. So here it is. V equals R dQ dt plus Q over C. Next, use the information in the question. The steady state charge is CV. Now you'd be expected to know that sort of basic electrical information. So therefore, I get the formula 250C equals 5, and therefore I can derive the parameter C for the capacitance. Now 5% from steady state is equivalent to three time constants. So that's an observation you should know about first order systems. So the time constant is going to be RC. Now, if you can't see that, if you look at this formula here, if you put it into time constant form, you're going to get RV equals RC dQ dt plus Q. So you can see the time constant is RC. So RC is going to have to be basically your 6 milliseconds divided by 3. So that's the formula we've got there, 0 0.006 divided by 3. So now I just take the two pieces of information I've got. RC is 0.002, C equals 0.02, and therefore R has to be 0.1. Example 4. Find the system output at t equals 4.2 seconds given the following model. Now again, you'll notice that the model is not in time constant form. So first thing I do is put the model into time constant form. And you see I've done that by dividing through by this 3.4. So I've identified that the time constant is 0 0.618 and capital C is 0 0.588. And now all I need to do is plug the numbers in. So before I do that, let's make sure I've got all the parameters clear. So I know what CU is, 0 0.1471. I know what the time constant is. I know what the time is. It's given in the question here, 4.2. And I know the initial condition, minus 1, is given here. And you'll notice I've also given u equals 2.5. So you must remember that. So we've got to do c times u to get cu. So all I do now is plug those numbers into that formula, use my calculator or MATLAB, and there's my answer. So some conclusions. The video has given a few worked examples of practical problems involving first order models. The core principle is to begin from what you know and see how this can be combined with information in the question, thus building up additional insights and information. Always begin from time constant form, irrespective of how the question is worded, because that's how your basic observations are defined. They're defined in terms of time constant form. And just a reminder as ever, keep up with your quizzes, tutorial sheets and bring any questions to contact sessions.